Hey everyone, uh, Carl Schilling, I'm the founder and CEO of the Advocacy Network. And as I promised, I wanted to talk to you today real quickly about some of the um, common uh, misunderstandings about life insurance. And, and there's many. Um, first of all, I will share with you, I, I've been in this uh, uh, industry, business, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, around 44 years. And during that time, I've changed a lot of my own um, thoughts and process as well, and my own philosophies. And I have learned from some of the uh, greater minds in this industry, okay? So I'm going to share with you today some things that very few home office executives recognize, uh, even fewer agents are that familiar with, and quite frankly, the talking financial heads who consistently get it wrong when they want to talk to you about whole life insurance. So first, let me tell you, it's not an investment. And I'm going to show you some things today to make you recognize what a unique asset it is and why it's so special. And it should be in everyone's portfolio. The wealthy have used this for generational wealth consistently. And this is why they've stayed wealthy. So pay close attention. I know as a middle-class person, you can do these same things that the wealthy do. The problem is you're not exposed to this. No one comes to talk to you about this because they're too busy trying to find people with very high incomes in the one to 5% of the arena. And they're also trying to uh, share with them some of these basic principles because they feel like they can afford it. No one else can, but you can as a middle-class person with a career, with a job, with however you're creating income, you can do the same things the wealthy do. And I'm going to show you real briefly and quickly uh, on this type of thing. Okay. So let me just get the screen up real quickly. And I want to show you um, how we're going to do this. Um, so we'll share it from the slide. Okay, here we go from the beginning. Okay, so here's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about um, the under the surface story of life insurance. Okay, these are the things you look at a iceberg and you see that pinnacle above the water, but the real heavy weight and the real uh, lockdown of the surface is beneath the water. That's where the iceberg really has formed and it has gotten incredibly stronger at that point, okay? So this is beneath the surface on life insurance. Now, this is what uh, very few people seem to understand or know. And I'm gonna go over it real quickly uh, because it, this really requires a consultation. And these are the kind of things I talk to you one-on-one -on -one in a consultation, but, Life insurance has an inflation guard. Well, first of all, because whole life insurance has a fixed premium, it's fixed at the very beginning. And I'm just using rough numbers. Don't, don't hold to this because numbers are all different. Round numbers help. Let's just say you had $1,000 that went out in premium and it bought a death benefit of $100,000. Okay, now it's not term insurance. This is dividend paying whole life insurance. And again, don't hold those numbers because they're just subjective and made up for the purpose of easy understanding, okay? So inflation erodes and it starts to reduce the purchasing power of that $1,000, right? Everybody seems to understand that. So basically that $1,000 in theory buys you less each year. But remember now, your premium was fixed and set and each year you're going to be locked in and you're paying that premium, okay? Now, the interesting thing is, as the amount of that premium purchasing wise, diminishes. So let's say in year two, a thousand only buys what 900 would buy. Well, your death benefit doesn't go back to 90,000. Your death benefit actually starts to grow when we look at dividends. And I'll explain that in a second. So as inflation is reducing the purchasing power of your premium dollars, your premium dollars are fixed, locked in, and they are consistently purchasing the same amount all the way, regardless of inflation. So you basically are inflation guarded based on a whole life. Now, it's not the case with other universal lives or IULs because those expenses are not guaranteed. They're not fixed and those expenses fluctuate. So again, you don't have this kind of inflation guard in that kind of policy, okay? Now, life insurance as a recession-proof tool, well, the interesting thing is dividend paying whole life insurance, a dividend is not like um, uh, an increase in, uh, of an investment on your money. 
A dividend is a return of premium. So therefore that $1,000 uh, uh, premium at a uh, end of a year, a company says, uh, says there's a 5.5% dividend scale. So they're gonna return you 5.5% of that premium you paid. Okay, now that's increasing every year. Okay, <laughs> dividends are not guaranteed, but they grow every single year and they grow alongside your cash value. So they are both inflation guarded as we discussed, but at the same time, because they are a return of that set premium, where now your premium is actually reducing because you're getting a dividend, your death benefit staying the same, your purchasing power has reduced based on inflation, but recession hasn't touched you. Okay, is everybody with me on that? So when you see this in numbers, you start to get it. So the proper use of dividends creates more cash value. And real briefly, I didn't make a slide for this, but real briefly, I'll talk to you about the cash value because everyone loves to, to talk about cash value or talking heads. But here's the reality. Cash value is nothing more than an actuarially designed return of the endowment of the death benefit. So as you live longer, your death benefit is being endowed, okay? Because you have paid a higher premium and the reason the premiums are higher than term insurance is for the company to invest on their own scales and for the company to be able to lower their reserves and protect their reserves by overcharging some premium. But you're getting back numerous benefits from that ability to put in more money into the, into the contract, okay? So the cash value is nothing more than your dollars endowing. In other words, if you live to 120 years old, most are doing 120 uh, years now instead of the old 100 year old, if they are basing mortality on a 120 year lifespan, your insurance policy would endow, the death benefit would equal the cash value at age 120. So if you live to 120, it wouldn't make a difference whether you died or not, you would, you would get the whole death benefit. If you die at any point in between, your cash value is not a separate amount of money. Your cash value was the endowment portion of the, the, uh, the, the initial contract. So therefore, the death benefit is always going to be greater than the cash value. But the dividends are growing as well. And you can use all kinds of tools and mechanisms to allow your uh, uh, contract to create tax-free liquidity, okay, tax-free income, and generational wealth, which it comes in the form of a state liquidity. And this is why the wealthy have always done so well, because they have owned millions and millions of dollars of life insurance and have left it to their generational uh, followings. Okay. And if they had accumulated great success and accumulated more than $5 million, $10 million, $20 million estate, the life insurance was in place to liquidate that estate without the estate having, you know, the taxes for this estate without the estate having to be liquidated at discount prices so that people in the generational wealth can keep the assets that have grown through that generation. That's, that's life insurance in a nutshell, okay? So there's also the other sideline to the whole thing that no one seems to pay attention to at all is there's a whole nother pot of cash. And that whole other pot of cash is tax-free liquidity in case you become critically ill, say you have heart attack or cancer or something of that nature, a chronic illness, something ongoing, long-term, let's say Lou Gehrig's disease, something of that nature, okay? Or a terminal illness. And the dollars, which are a portion of the death benefit, got nothing to do with your cash value. It's not coming out of that pot. It's coming out of the death benefit. The portion of the death benefit that is being paid out and liquidated prematurely due to some of these events, still leaving you with death benefit as well at the time of death. So there's so much more to go over here, but I did want to give you just those little highlights. Look, a life insurance contract is a unique asset, creates tax-free liquidity, it creates tax-free income, it creates generational wealth. It provides tax-free liquidity for critical illness, chronic illness, and terminal illness. And at the same time, it is inflation-proof and it is recession-proof. And I would have this debate with any financial advisor because they can make numbers, say whatever they want them to say, but there is nothing in the world 
that does all the things that a life insurance contract does. Should you have only life insurance? Of course not. Should you have only a portfolio investing in, in, uh, in stocks? Of course not. Should you have only bonds? Of course not. You should have a good portfolio blend. You should have everything in it. You should have gold and silver backing up your purchasing power. You should have a good amount of life insurance used as a bank, used for proper purposes and built properly. And that's what the middle class millionaire plan has been about from the beginning and will continue to be about. So if this makes sense to you, let's set up a 30 minute consultation. It's not going to cost you anything. In fact, I'm going to give you free and clear. I'm going to give you a $395 value for just meeting with me virtually and talking about these things and seeing how they sit in your life and how we could functionally make this contract work for you. That's all. And I will give you uh, financial, uh, financial, um, uh, financial transformation, which is a award-winning um, financial literacy program. And it teaches some unique things. And I'll give you that whole um, library and that whole course, 64 videos, uh, very short snippets, uh, pretty quick, uh, but uh, eight modules and 64 videos, all on financial literacy and self-development. So again, I'm Carl Schelling. Thank you so much for your time. And please take a close look at this and understand, regardless of the talking heads or anyone tells you, these are the facts about life insurance. These are the things the public is unaware of. And also many, many agents. I wrote the book, um, the Middle Class Millionaire Plan, not just for the public. I wrote it for agents as well, so that they would also become attuned to these unique aspects of a life insurance contract. Thank you so much. Have a great day.